welcome everyone to another video with me dr sunanda roy in today's video we will be looking at a teaching strategy which is activity based and is used for catering to diverse learners i'm talking about cooperative learning teaching strategy before we go into understanding the concept of cooperative learning let us briefly look at the origin of this teaching strategy cooperative learning has its roots in constructivism constructivism is a learning theory you may come across many definitions of constructivism in short constructivism states that a learner actively constructs knowledge on the basis of their past experiences there are many forms of constructivism however in this video we will be learning about social constructivism as cooperative learning teaching strategy is based on it social constructivism is also known as social development theory this theory was put forth by lev vygotsky who gave a lot of importance to social learning language culture and the context in which we learn he stated that every function in the child's cultural development appears twice first on the social level and later on the individual level that is first between people inter psychological and then inside the child intra psychological what he meant was that learning begins with a social interaction and then knowledge is constructed individually by the person hence learning takes place at two levels first on the social level and later on the individual level the social constructivist theory consists of many aspects i will be focusing on two aspects the first one is the more knowledgeable other or also known as the mko this stands for individuals having better understanding and higher ability level than the learner with respect to a particular task process or even a concept so while teaching the teacher in the classroom becomes the mko we also learn a lot from our classmates or peers hence they too can become mko what is interesting is that many of us as teachers or even parents learn things from our students or our children in such cases they become our mkos so the mko can be anyone having higher ability than the learner irrespective of their age or status the other interesting term is the zpd or the zone of proximal development there is a certain level we reach when we learn by ourselves without the help of others that is the actual level of development however if we learn with the help of adults or mqs we reach a higher level known as the level of potential development so the zone of proximal development is the difference between what a learner can do without help and what he or she can do with help these terms are the highlights for understanding the theory of social constructivism however briefly now we can apply this theory in our classroom by using cooperative learning so since cooperative learning is based on social constructivism it means that it deals with the learner learning with the help of peers or mkos cooperative learning was pioneered by david johnson and roger johnson 
So let's try and understand what cooperative learning really means. Though it consists of the word learning, cooperative learning is primarily a teaching strategy. It consists of the teacher dividing the class into small heterogeneous pairs or groups. The groups should be restricted to having four to five members so that each member gets a chance to participate in the classroom activity. Having heterogeneous groups means that the members have different abilities. This increases the possibilities of getting a variety of responses and constructing knowledge. Because a heterogeneous group will have different levels of past experiences on which knowledge will be constructed. Also, this makes cooperative learning teaching strategy useful in inclusive classrooms. Students with disabilities can be grouped or even paired with typically developed students and both can learn from each other. Each group is given a common goal. The goals could be common for all the groups. So a teacher can give the same activity or goal to all the groups or different activities or goals can be given to each group. However, remember each group has a common goal. Hence, each group member will be engaged in reaching a common group goal. Cooperative learning can be conducted by using numerous learning activities. These are the techniques which can be conducted in pairs or in groups. Some of the well-known techniques which are also known as structures are think, pair, share, numbered heads together, circle the sage and so on. In fact, there are more than 250 structures which have been developed by Dr. Spencer Kagan. Cooperative learning strategy is a student-centered teaching strategy and hence the teacher here is a facilitator. So the teacher does not give the knowledge directly but creates an environment for students to construct knowledge. So here the student actively constructs knowledge. Let's try it out over here on this slide itself. Try to construct your own definition of cooperative learning using these key terms. It should be noted that all group activities need not necessarily be cooperative learning. This is because there are some essential elements of cooperative learning. These elements have been given by Dr. Spencer Kagan. The first element is positive interdependence. The group activity should be designed in such a way that the group members perceive that they need each other in order to complete the group's task. It's like a sink or swim situation. Hence, everyone should actively participate towards achieving the group goal. The second element is face-to-face -face interaction. The group members should have the opportunity to communicate face-to-face -face while promoting each other's productivity by helping, sharing and encouraging efforts to produce. So the environment is very open and positive towards learning. The activity should also encourage the development of interpersonal and small group skills like decision making, tr trust building, communication, and even conflict management skills in case there are differences of opinions that may arise between group members during discussions. Next one is the individual and group accountability. While conducting the activity, the teacher needs to allot roles to each group member like the group leader or a reader, note taker, timekeeper, etc. 
Hence, each member has an individual goal and a group goal to work towards. So there is no chance of the members taking credit for the success of the group without actively contributing towards it. The last one is group processing. Here, the teacher not only assesses the responses of the groups at the end of the activity, but also allows the groups to discuss and share how they were able to achieve the goal. Hence, in cooperative learning, importance is given not only to the product, but also to the process. Also remember that in cooperative learning, the teacher needs to constantly supervise the activity. She cannot just give the activity and go and sit in a different room or sit at her chair catching up with her correction work. She has to be active and in the sense supervising the activity. This element is rarely practiced by teachers but it is very important as it trains students on how to work and learn cooperatively. So this group processing helps students being able to work in cooperation, which becomes an essential skill required in any jobs or careers in their future. Unfortunately, developing this essential skill of cooperation to work cooperatively is neglected by teachers and educational institutions. And that's where using cooperative learning teaching strategy by teachers become vital. These are the five elements of cooperative learning which distinguishes cooperative learning techniques from other group activities used in classrooms. Using cooperative learning, teachers can easily go beyond the textbooks and stimulate higher order thinking amongst their students. There are some limitations regarding cooperative learning. However, my experiences with cooperative learning teaching techniques for almost a decade now indicates that teachers can overcome many of these limitations with proper training in the use of cooperative learning. I've been fortunate for getting the opportunity to use these techniques with school children and even while training school teachers as well as university professors regarding cooperative learning. This teaching strategy works with students of all age groups and abilities. It is truly an inclusive teaching strategy. I must say that I have thoroughly enjoyed learning through these experiences. So try them out in your class and enjoy giving students a chance to actively participate. These are the references for further reading. This website by Dr. Spencer Kagan will give you all the information about various structures or techniques of cooperative learning. It is a very interesting and informative site for teachers. Like in all my videos, you will find the links given in the description of the video. Just click on show more and you will get to see all the links. You just need to click on the links and then you can go into the websites and get all the information. I hope you liked the video and have understood the origin and concept of this interesting student-centered teaching strategy known as cooperative learning. Thank you so much for watching the video.